Dear students, I am Dr. Y. P. Agrawal. Now, the module that we are going to discuss with you is on probability. And we are going to show you the fundamental notions of probability, various theorems of probability, and also the binomial probability. The various objectives of this module are the students will be able to learn the concept of probability and its theorems, the concept of binomial and its calculations. The student will be able to understand the uses of probability theory in research. Now, I am going to tell you in brief the history and the concept of probability. Probability theory has its origins in games of chance. Now, it has become a fundamental tool of scientific thinking. In general, the interpretation of the data of experiments is in probabilistic terms. The probability theory incorporating different probability models helps the scientists to interpret the relationship between the deductive consequences of the theory and the observed data. Several theoretical models, binomial, normal, Poisson, and hypergeometric, etc., are in vogue. However, the first two are more popularly used in educational research. It's so because of their suitability to the data based on educational phenomena. Now we come to the various approaches. A definition of probability can follow three approaches. The subjective approach or personalistic approach, which is based on statements like the probability is high that it will probably rain today. The second approach is the formal mathematical approach. It defines the probability of an event as the ratio of the number of favorable cases to the total number of equally likely cases. This usage is based on games of chance involving cards, dice, and coins. The probability of getting a 3 in one throw of dice is 1 upon 6. In this way, this usage is based on a concept of equally likely cases. The postulate of equally likely cases is a theoretical one. And is not based on empirical considerations. The third, the empirical relative frequency approach considers relative frequencies as the basis of prediction. If a series of n trials is made and a given event occurs r times, then r upon n is a relative frequency. The relative frequency in a sample of observations is an estimate of that parameter the three approaches to probability are not incompatible. All three must of necessity co coexist. While the personalistic probability may be an interesting topic of psychological inquiry, the other two approaches are widely used in statistical work. The relative frequency approach being the complement of the formal mathematical one. Now we come to the some fundamental notions of probability. The concepts which are fundamental to the understanding of probability are described below. Number one, the concept of possible outcomes. In tossing a coin, the number of possible outcomes are two, either a head or a tail, that's H or T. In tossing two coins, the four possible outcomes are involved. Uh, I am going to show you the possible outcomes when we use the various types of combinations of coins. First coin and second coin and their description and with symbols. Now the first coin will show head, second coin will show head too and we are describing that both coins are heads and symbols are HH. The second possible outcome is first coin head, second coin tail, and then we write HT. And the third possible outcome is the first coin tail, second coin head, and we write TH. And then the last outcome is first coin tail, second coin tail, and we have TT. Similarly, in tossing three coins, the possible outcomes are HHH, HHT, HTH, THH, HTT, THT, TTH, and TTT. 
when dice is thrown, the possible outcomes are 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. When 2 dice are thrown, the number of possible outcomes are 36. In drawing a single card from a deck of 52 cards, the number of outcomes are 52. But in drawing one card from one deck of 52 cards and another card from a different deck, the possible outcomes would be 52 times 52 that is 2704. Now, I am going to show you the possible outcomes out of the situation when we drop two dice and this situation shows me like this. The first dice shows one, second dice shows one and then the first dice shows one, the second dice shows two, the first dice shows one, the second dice shows three and the first dice shows one, second dice shows four and the first dice shows one, second dice shows five, first dice shows one, the second dice shows six, so on and so forth as given in this table. Dear students, with most coins, dice and cards, the basic assumption of equal a likelihood of all possible outcomes is justifiable. The truth of the statement can be checked by experiment. The probability of an event is denoted by P. For instance, the probability of one head in the one coin situation will be P H within bracket and of one tail p t within bracket. Probability can be regarded as the ratio of the number of favorable cases to the total number of equally likely cases. The following examples may be viewed with profit. Dear students, the total probability for all the possible events as shown above is always unity or one and can be obtained by adding up the probabilities of the individual events. We may also remember that the probability of an event occurring plus it will not occur also equals 1. If no third possibility was there, in the above examples, we were able to deduce the probabilities associated with the given events. On the basis of the equally likely cases, however, sometimes the estimation of the probability requires empirical approach. For example, to know the probability of a person chosen at random from the population of Delhi to be over 50 years of age would require the use of census data. Now, take a look at the table of calculation of probability in different situations. Now, we have the event, we have the number of favorable cases, we have the number of equally likely cases, and the finally, in the last column, we have the probability and this we give as column 2 upon column 3. Now, the first thing that we have is one coin example. One head gives me 1 upon 2, that's half, that's 0.5 probability. One tail gives me 0.5 or half as probability. The total by adding up these two, I get 1. Now, in the two coin example, we have two heads with the probability of 0.25, two tails with the probability of 0.25 and one head and one tail, we have the probability of 0 0.50 each. The total we get 1. Now, in the three coin example, we have calculated these values in the same manner and then we have one dice example, we have calculated that for number 1 to appear, we have 1 chance out of 6, that's 1 upon 6. And for number 2 to appear, we have 1 upon 6 or 0.167, so on and so forth. Hence, in this table, we have shown the various situations and the calculation of the probability in each of the situations. Now, we come to the various theorems of probability. We call it addition and multiplication rules. The addition theorem states that the probability 
that any one of a number of mutually exclusive events will occur is the sum of the probabilities of the separate events event that cannot happen at the same time are mutually exclusive. In a one coins plus problem, the occurrence of a head is mutually exclusive with the occurrence of a tail, as both cannot happen at the same time. In a throw of a dice, the probability of obtaining each of a one, two, three, four, five, and six are mutually exclusive. And which is the probability of obtaining either a 1, a 2, or 4 in a single throw? This can be obtained by adding up the probabilities associated with coins, 4 possible events, H, 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 T, T, H, and T, T are possible. What is the probability of obtaining either 2 heads or 2 tails? The probability of each of these events is 1 upon 4. Hence, the probability of obtaining either two heads or two tails is 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon 4, that is half. The multiplication theorem states that the probability of the joint occurrence of two or more independent events is the product of their separate probabilities. When a single coin is tossed twice, the probability of getting a head on the first is half and on the second toss is also half. The probability of getting two heads in the theorem is 1 upon 2 times 1 upon 2 is equal to 1 upon 4. In the same manner, we could determine that the probability of getting three heads from tossing a single coin three times would be 1 upon half times 1 upon half times 1 upon half, that is 1 upon 8. What is the probability of obtaining sixes in rolling two dice? The probability that first dice is a six is also 1.6. Hence, the probability that both dice are 6s is, is 1.6 times 1.6, that is 1.36. Dear students, now we come to another concept of probability. We call it the binomial distribution. And I am going to explain to you the, this concept. Suppose we have the hypothesis that a student taking a true false test will respond to each item by tossing a coin. If you assume that 50 percent of the times the toss will result in a correct answer and the rest of the 50 percent times is in incorrect answers, we may say that the probability of making a correct answer is half and is equal to the probability of making an incorrect answer, which is also half. Suppose further that the test contains 10 true false items. The questions that may be asked are, what is the probability of the student obtaining all the 10 items correct or all the 10 items incorrect or 7 answers correct and 3 incorrect? In such situations, binomial distribution provides the answer. To answer the last question, we may use the formula. This is NCR P to the power R q to the power n minus r is equal to n factorial upon n minus r factorial times r factorial. And then we multiply this to p to the r q to the n minus r. These symbols are like this. NCR is the number of combinations of n things taken at r at a time. P stands for the probability of getting a correct answer. Q stands for the probability of getting an incorrect answer. N stands for the total number of questions. R is the number of correct answers desired. Substituting the numerical values in the formula, we obtain a value which is 0.117. Similarly, we could use the above formula to obtain the probability of the student getting any particular score ranging from 10 to 0 correct answers. The binomial for n things can be further expanded as p plus q to the n is equal to p to the n plus n p to the n minus 1 q plus n times n minus 1 upon 1 times 2 to the p to the n and q to the 2 and then we have plus n 
times n minus 1 times n minus 2 upon 1 times 2 times 3 to the p to the n minus 3 q to the 3 plus dot 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 plus q to the n. For the problem of 10 true false items mentioned above, binomial expansion would be given below. p plus q to the 10 is equal to p to the 10 plus 10 times p to the 9 q plus 45 times p to the 8 q to the 2 plus 120 times p to the 7 q to the 3 plus 210 p to the 6 q to 4 plus 252 times p to the 5 q to 5 plus 210 times p to the 4 q to the 6 plus 120 times p to 3 q to the 7 plus 44 times p to the 2 q to the 8 plus 10 times p to the 1 q to 9 plus q to the 10. The value of p and q is half in each case can also be inserted. The fourth term then would be 120 times half to the 7 and half to the 3. The exponent of p in each of the terms of the binomial expansion as in formula given above indicates the number of items correct, their successes and that of q indicates the number of items incorrect, that is failures. The numerical coefficients represent the number of ways in which each of the combinations of successes and failures may occur. The rules for expanding the binomial that is p plus q to the n are summarized here. Each term in the binomial consists of the product of a numerical coefficient and the power of p and the power of q. The first term always has a numerical coefficient of 1 which is understood and hence not written. The power of p in the first term is always n and the power of q is 0. Since q to the 0 is equal to 1, q does not appear. Thus, the first term always is p to the n. In each succeeding term, the power of p decreases by 1 in regular order, while the power of q increases by 1 in regular order until the final term q to the n is obtained. The product of the numerical coefficient, the power of p in any given term divided by 1 plus the power of q in that term will give the numerical coefficient of the term and that follows. For example, the numerical coefficient of 45 of the third term has been obtained by multiplying the coefficient of the second term by its power of p and then dividing by 1 plus the power of q. Like this, 10 times 9 upon 1 plus 1 is equal to 90 plus 2 is equal to 45. The numerical coefficient for any combination of correct and incorrect answers can be obtained by the formula NCR is equal to n factorial upon n minus r factorial times n factorial. The above example with n is equal to 10 items, the number of correct answers that is r equal to 3, the numerical coefficient would be 10 C3 is equal to 10 factorial upon 10 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial is equal to 1 to 0. The students, the coefficient of n up to 10 is given in the Pascal triangle. It may be noted that any entry in a given row consists of the sum of coefficients to the right and left of the entry in the row directly above. Thus, the entries of n is equal to 11 can be calculated from the entries for n is equal to 10. Thus, they would be 1, 11, 55, 165, 330, 462, 330, 165, 55, 11 and 1. Since the binomial is symmetric, the values of the numerical coefficient to the left and to the right of the middle term or terms are equal. We tested n students with our true-false test. 
we still assume that each student answered each item by flipping a coin. That is by chance that we may readily determine the number of students expected to obtain each possible score. And the formula for this purpose is given here. n times p plus q to the n is equal to n times p to the n plus n times n p to the n minus 1 to the q within bracket plus n times within bracket n minus 1 upon 1 times 2 times p to the n minus 2 times q to the 2 plus n times n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 whole upon 1 times 2 times 3 and the whole times to n p to the n minus 3 and q to 3 plus dot 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 plus n q to the n. In this n is the number of students tested. Small n is the number of items in the test. P the probability of a correct response to a single item. Q is a 1 minus P. See the sum of numerical coefficients for n is equal to 10 as given in the Pascal's triangle is 1024. We can for simplicity take n is equal to 1024. The probabilities of n's for various events are given in another table shown here. And this table shows the various values which we have calculated for using the binomial with p is equal to 5, n is equal to 10 and, and capital N is equal to 1024. Capital N shows the number of students. Now, when we find that we need 10, 10 correct answers, the score proportion would be 10 and then the probability would be 1 upon 1024 or 0 0.001 and the expected number of students that would do the, all the 10 questions correct would be just 1 out of 1024 and so on and so forth. If we take another look at another point, we find that when we need 8 answers correct, the proportion correct is 0 0.8 and the probability would be calculated like 45 upon 1024. That is 0 0.044. And in brief, we can say 45 students would do 8 answers correct out of 10 answers, so on and so forth. The students, to conclude this module, I can say that we have studied the meaning of probability, types of probability, and various concepts related to probability, and various theorems related to probability. We have also studied the binomial probability, and also studied the Pascal triangle. Dear students, it's good that you do some practice on this, and you take up some practical problems for doing this, and try to use them in your research also. It's a highly useful concept and we use the various models of probability in interpretation of results of the data that you, you collect from the field. Hence, it's important to understand the very concept of probability and the binomial probability, normal probability and other, other concepts related to the probability. Thank you.